So we had a trip, Jonas and I, to the Tesla uh, service centre in Manchester recently and we went to see the Cybertruck. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. And today we're looking at the technology that's going into the Tesla Model 2, the Redwood. What we're talking about is the technology that goes into it and why that's relevant for the Tesla Model 2, the Redwood that's coming out later this year, probably in the UK early next year. Um, and this is the £25,000 uh, Tesla that everyone's been talking about. But looking at the Cybertruck and going into the technical detail about the Cybertruck, there's two amazing things that have changed that are going to make such a difference. Uh, this is the technology that's going to go into the uh, Model 2. And it's not to do with the four-wheel steering or the uh, steer-by-wire. Uh, may or may not have those, but these are much bigger ones. Uh, the first of those is the 48-volt architecture. Now, for 100 years, everyone's had a car which is 12 volts. Uh, well, a few people, Volkswagen. I had a Volkswagen Beetle that was 6 volts way back in the early 70s. Uh, but for most people, you've got a 12-volt battery. The whole system runs on 12 volts. Your headlight runs on 12 volts. Your windscreen wiper motor, uh, your, window, uh, your uh, wing mirror, uh, door mirror motors. Everything's 12 volts. And that's absolutely fine. It's been that way for 100 years. And apparently the industry has been talking about changing out of that 12 volts to something better uh, for a very important reason. Tesla's just gone and done it with the Cybertruck and I believe that will almost certainly, 100% guarantee, go into the Tesla Model 2. Why is it so important? When you're measuring cable, this is wiring looms now, whether, whether you use wires or cable, um, the maximum amount of uh, uh, power it can take uh, is determined by the heating. Uh, when you put um, electricity through a cable, there's resistance and it gets warm. And that uh, restriction is uh, measured by the number of amps you put through it. So if you ever look at a um, electrical chart for cable sizing, this is cable for your house, uh, you'll find that your ring main is a uh, six millimeter cable and that the lighting circuit is one and a half millimeter cable. That's because light bulbs, very low power, your ring main could be powering two kilowatt heaters, three kilowatt kettles and the like. Um, so it comes down to current. So if we take an example for the car, just the difference it makes, because people don't appreciate this yet. If you have a motor on the back for your tailgate, I've got electric tailgate on this. Now, let's just hypothetically, let's just call that 100 watts. Watts is uh, voltage times current. Uh, so that's how you work out the power. So if the car, this one's 12 volts, and you want 100 uh, watts at the end, you have to put through it about 8 amps, 8 and a bit amps, uh, to get there. And that will require a certain size cable, a certain thickness cable, to stop it overheating and catching fire. If, on the other hand, you've got a 48 volt battery and you need 100 watts at the tailgate, you now only need to put two amps through the cable. So that cable now can be at least a quarter of the size and therefore a quarter of the weight. It's actually much, much more than that because if ever you do your square area, your volume of a cylinder, uh, it's pi, uh, two, uh, pi, R, uh, pi R squared H, which is pi times the radius squared times the height or the length in this case. Um, absolutely huge difference. It's way in excess of the four that you'd expect it to be uh, going from a, a 48 volt. So what it means, first of all, is that you can use a much lighter cable. That's great for the weight of the car. Absolutely brilliant, because the lighter an EV is, the further the range on it. So everyone's trying to get the weight down. One of the biggest things in a car that weighs an awful lot, besides your motor and your uh, battery, uh, it's your wiring loom. These are, if ever you've tried to fit your own radiator, uh, radiator, radio into a car and you've seen that big bundle of cables, that's just the, the, the wiring loom for the radio. You can imagine what the rest of the car is. So on a tailgate, on a typical car, you'd have a battery alternator and then you'd have a fuse box which will normally be under the bonnet. Then you have a wire comes from the fuse to the back of the dashboard and the dashboard will be where you, you, you have a switch. And a switch has to be a certain size, so you won't be able to use really tiny switches if you've got a big thick cable connected to it. So your switch, your cable will come to the back of the dashboard and it will connect into, let's say, your tail lift button on the dashboard. And what will happen is a cable will then go from that all the way to the back of the car. 
and that cable will carry everything. If you look at something like your indicators, uh, let's look at your rear indicators, you'll have a cable that goes from the fuse box to the uh, indicator lever, and then you'll have a cable that goes to this one. You can't run the same cable to the other one because they have to operate independently, so you'll have a separate wire going from the fuse box to that one. But then you'll also have another wire which goes from your fuse box to both of them to operate your uh, hazard warning lights where you do want them all four on at once. Massive amount of cabling. Uh, and that's all in 12 volts, which means that it's, it's four, five, six times the thickness and the weight and the amount of copper as a 48 volt. So just changing down to uh, changing up to 48 volts will drop the weight of your wiring loom absolutely dramatically. Uh, it's also a lot cheaper. There's less than a quarter the amount of material in it. So a huge amount of difference. So changing that 48 hour. And, and once Tesla announced it, they've done it on the Cybertruck, once they announced it, the whole of the um, legacy industry said, oh yeah, we've been thinking about doing that for years. Never got round to it. We got too many cars running at 12 volts to uh, want to upset the Apple car. So um, yeah, so Tesla's done it, the 48 volt. But the next move, the one on the Cybertruck, which will be on the Model 2, is the stunning one. And for this, we've got to go back to computers. So imagine you've got some sort of computer at home. It might be a desktop or a tower uh, with a keyboard, mouse and a monitor. It might be a tablet. It might be just a smartphone. Uh, but what it will have is a port on it. On, on, on smartphones nowadays and tablets, it's a USB-C. On a computer, it's usually USB-C. And you have USB-A as well. And uh, in the past, you used to plug everything into that, into the computer. So you would have a keyboard plug into your computer. You'd have a mouse and plug it into your computer. You'd have a monitor again. You'd have a webcam. You might have a printer. You might have a scanner. You might have a pair of uh, speakers. Uh, loads and loads of things. I've got a little overhead light on the, uh, on the monitor. All these are USB devices that used to plug into the, um, into the computer itself. If you've got a tablet, I've got an iPad, uh, there's only one terminal in it, so you've got a major problem if you want to use more than one device. So that's why they brought out USB hubs. Now, USB hubs are really simple little things. They're about five or ten, absolutely nothing. You plug one end into your, let's take a tablet, you plug one end into your iPad, and you get a little bar comes out, and it's a hub, and it's got maybe six or eight uh, USB uh, connectors in it, sockets. And what you can do now is you plug the one socket, uh, one plug into the socket on your tablet, and then you plug your tablet, your keyboard, uh, your tablet, you plug your keyboard, your mouse, anything you want, your printer, uh, webcam, speakers, everything, uh, storage, you plug it all into the hub. And most of those devices will actually use the USB cable to bring them the power. So if you've got a, a mouse, you don't have a power supply for a mouse. It runs off the USB cable. Same with a keyboard, same with a webcam, same with a pair of speakers. Um, some things, like the printer, you do need separate power. So that will plug into the mains, uh, get its power from the mains, but it gets signal from the USB. But this one hub will allow you to just plug everything into it. It uh, doesn't matter what order you plug them in. If you go on your tablet and you say, I want to print a document, uh, you'll get the app will, will open up. It'll say print. And if you print, the tablet itself will look at which one of those devices is the printer that I want. And it will ask them, are you a printer? Are you a printer? Are you a printer? Oh, you are. I'm going to send the signal to you and it will print the document. Same with if you use a mouse. Some people use a mouse or a keyboard uh, on tablet. If you're doing a lot of uh, typing, it's easier than using the screen. And it will decide which is which. And that's the technology that's in the Cybertruck, but which is coming to the Model 2. So, two of them put together. What will happen is a lot of the devices on the car will be able to run straight off USB-C. So maybe um, interior lights, uh, various bits and pieces, but some of them won't. So what the car will have effectively is one central cable, very small cable because it's 48 volts, and that cable will be a power supply for the whole car. Every device will plug into that if it needs power. If it doesn't need power, it won't plug into that. So the tail lift motor almost certainly will plug into that. So how are you going to get the signal there? What they're going to run is a USB hub. Uh, it's going to be a series of hubs. So it'll be a hub under the bonnet, single cable, a hub in the cab, single cable, hub in the boot, uh, single cable, hub in the door. 
So when you're wiring up a door, instead of running a wiring loom, which has got speaker cables and motors for the mirrors, heaters for the mirrors, uh, heaters for the door handles, uh, electric windows and everything, you'll have one power cable comes in, which is a really small one, and then you'll have a USB hub with a cable coming in. And this will plug into the hub, the door handle will plug into the hub, the window will plug into, everything will just plug into that. And so you've now done away entirely with the wiring loom for the whole of the car. You've got one central cable which will provide 48 volt power to the car and everything else will just be a USB hub, uh, daisy chained. And the computer will work out how to switch on and off various devices, but it'll be just as simple as your tablet. That will make the Model 2 one of the lightest cars that has ever existed. It will have the big lightest EVs. It will have a battery, obviously, which is fairly hefty, but it won't have a wiring loom. It won't have big, thick copper wires. It won't have an awful lot of stuff. Everything will be ultra lightweight. And that means, being light, it can go further. Uh, weight is a killer, a killer for range. So with the lighter cables, no cables, no wiring loom in effect, uh, you can use a smaller battery. Uh, also, in conjunction with that, some of you might have seen the video I did where Tesla got hold of a pile of really cheap batteries, uh, like of Ford and GM and Stellantis, uh, ordered loads of batteries in the early days thinking they were going to sell, uh, just switch to EVs and sell a massive number of cars. They didn't. Well, all those batteries are sat waiting now and the manufacturers are now starting to get rid of them cheap. Uh, big fire sale, if you like. And Tesla have found they can buy these batteries uh, these are the good batteries, the NMC, the nickel manganese cobalt, uh, these are the more powerful ones, and they're able to buy those cheaper than they can actually make LFPs, the cheaper battery themselves. So you're likely to have virtually no wiring loom, you're going to have a USB hub, you're going to have 48 volt architecture, and you're going to have NMC batteries in it. And that's going to make this a really, really, really cheap car, but an amazing one, because the NMC are much more powerful than the LFP batteries. So you could end up with a car that is actually a lot cheaper than £25,000, but an awful lot better than we were anticipating. We were thinking it's going to have LFP, might not. That's my prediction anyhow. We have yet to see whether this is all going to happen, but that's what I'm thinking. My prediction then is it will come in under budget, under £25,000. It'll be the middle of next year, and it's going to be an absolute cracker of a car.